This is an open question to the science-based lifting community. Where should we terminate a set on an exercise like leg curls and, say, pull-ups, where you simply will lose range of motion as you approach the point of failure? Before addressing his question, I just want to point out that Jeff Nibbert helped me a lot when I first started powerlifting. He noticed me on YouTube and just sent me a free program. So I hope that if he finds this video, he knows that I'm very thankful and he inspired me greatly at the beginning of my journey. Now going on to the question, should we take an exercise all the way to failure even if it's partial reps? I'd argue yes, because based off the current scientific literature, we do know some muscles benefit greatly from being in a lengthened position or even in a partial range of motion. However, it does seem that some muscles get more out of a lengthened position or a partial range of motion more than others, so why might this be the case? I hypothesize that it's largely due to muscle design. Now to understand my hypothesis, you just need to understand that all muscles that you can control are made from functional units called sarcomeres, which shorten whenever you use, flex, or contract a muscle. And sarcomeres are either on or off, there's no in-between. Now sarcomeres come together to create muscle fibers, which are oriented in different ways, and these different orientations are known as muscle design. Now based on our current knowledge of the musculoskeletal anatomy, there's seven different muscle designs. And the only design I won't be talking about today is circular because it's really only used for your facial muscles. Now the other six muscle designs can be generally categorized as pennate, parallel, or a little in between like the convergent. First, let's talk about the parallel designs. You've got the non-fusiform, purely parallel, or the fusiform. Now muscles like your biceps are known as parallel because sarcomeres or muscle fibers are stacked up and down the length of the muscle in the direction of the two tendons. Basically, sarcomeres are parallel. In contrast, the pennate category, which includes unipennate, bipennate, and multipennate muscle designs, have a unique feather-like design where sarcomeres sarcomeres are stacked on a diagonal line. Now, if you take a bipennant muscle like your rectus femoris or quadricep muscle and you draw a line down the middle and a line that's oriented with the muscle fibers, the angle in between those two lines is known as the pinnation angle. Now, as the pinnation angle increases, that muscle has an increased capacity to generate force. And little fun fact, even though different pinnate muscles are naturally built with specific pinnation angles, you can manually increase the pinnation angle of your muscle fibers by lifting weight at the gym. Now, if you're wondering, yes, as the pinnation angle decreases, the less capacity that muscle has to generate force. And since parallel muscles have no pinnation angle, they have the least capacity to generate force. A good example of this would be how I can put up 225 pounds on the leg extension machine with my bipennate and unipennate quad muscles, but with my parallel designed biceps, I can only put up 20 to 50 pounds. Now I hope you're still with me, but going back to the question. Remember when I said that the functional unit of muscles is either on or off? Well, parallel muscles have fibers going in the direction of the contraction. In contrast, pennate muscle fibers are aligned with the pinnation angle. So even in a partial range of motion, pennate muscle fibers will likely be very active. Now this isn't to say that parallel muscles won't be active in a partial range of motion or a lengthened position because you still have to control the movement down. Overall, I believe that muscle design is important and that pennate muscles will benefit more from a lengthened position and partial range of motion than parallel muscles. But that's not to say that we need more research.